I'm Computer Shoot 'em Up Action with Zynaps. When you think of shoot 'em ups, you tend to think of the Japanese games, namely Gradius slash Nemesis, and so on on machines like the MSX or the Sega Mega Drive, SNES, PC Engine. But there was also a fair few decent shoot 'em ups for the home 8 and 16 bit systems in the UK. Zynapse is a 1987 game by Hewson. It's the it's one of the follow ups to Iridium, sharing a couple of the same programmers, Dominic Robinson and Steve Turner, but also John Cumming and Stephen Crow. And the graphics on the ST and Amiga were done by Pete Lyon. 8-bit versions, 1987, 16-bits, 98. Eight. Going to start off on the Spectrum. 48k music. Your Sinclair gave this 9 out of 10 and also got a Crash Smash. So it's a standard shoot em up, isn't it, really? You know the score, you go along, you shoot things. And yes, the programmers have been looking at Nemesis on the MSX. And there's a power up system that's very comparable to that. It is very, very hard, by the way. You get three lives, and the scenery will cause you insta death, and the baddies will also cause you insta death if you touch them, and they'll also fire back at you as well. And the collision detection is pixel perfect. Over to the Amstrad CPC. There's an updated version of this loading screen, by the way, which looks quite stunning, but this is the standard original release running on my CPC 6128. And a very demo y effect menu screen that makes the text quite hard to read. And a great tune. Spectrum and Amstrad versions run at 25 frames a second. C64 runs at 50 frames a second. But this is pretty smooth for an Amstrad shooter and very attractive as well. As is the Spectrum version. There's no noticeable slowdown. You pick up the power-ups and then when you want to activate the power-up you've reached with the number of blobs you've collected. You hold down the fire button, then the next power-up you pick up activates the power-up you've selected. It's a little bit complicated, needlessly so, and it's quite difficult in the thick of the action to keep track of what power-up you're about to select. I end up doing it quite by random. Some of the power-ups have multiple levels as well, including speed and firepower, because you can fire at a faster rate and you can travel faster as well, although with the moving around power up, only one of those is suggested, pretty much like with Nemesis, because it becomes quite difficult to control, especially on the C64, if you've got more than one speed power up on the go. And this is the C64, running at 50 frames a second. And as I said, don't touch anything, which is easier said than done, because on the 64, your ship has inertia. Which is an interesting design decision. It means basically you're not crashing into things when there was no need. There's a reason most shoot 'em ups don't have inertia, guys. And yeah, this is it. Over to the Atari ST, which has the same music as the Amstrad and a very similar demo effect. Larger spaceships, smaller baddies. Don't know why. Oh dear. On all of these versions, you are going to die a lot. Ah! Uh. Amiga version. Ostensibly the same as the ST, except with a different music track and a crushed up screen. How many times do I say that? The activation effect for the fuel scoop is, um, well, it's a turn screen white on the ST and Amiga. It's not particularly helpful. And it, what, another thing that's not particularly helpful on the ST and Amiga is the power-ups look... Well, they are the same colour as other things that appear on the screen, as opposed to a distinct colour, like on the Spectrum Commodore and Amstrad, which means, yeah, you can... In the thick of battle, it can be quite hard to distinguish what you need to pick up versus what's actually an enemy missile.
The game gets easier the more power-ups you get, but you need to get those power-ups first, which means there's a bit of catch-22 section, because when you first start off on a level, or just after you die, you are pretty much defenseless. You'll know one of the gameplay mechanics of Nemesis and Gradius um, is that actually the game ramps up the difficulty the more power-ups you have. So it's actually a little bit easier if you can get away playing the game with just a speed up power up because if you start loading up the enemies get everything gets fast gets faster and more difficult on here it's the same difficulty all the way through and yeah it's quite oh, i've died there still on the amiga let's see how i can get far because on some of these versions, I'm going to have to use a cheat. On the Amiga version, I'm just playing it as a standard at the moment. But one of the common complaints about this game is people cannot get beyond the first few levels. Nobody seems sure on the 16-bit versions how many levels there are. I counted at least nine before it loops around on the Spectrum. So end of level one on the ST. And surprisingly, no in-game music on the ST or any kind of drone effect in the background. It's just the three-channel AY sound. Same as the Amstrad, all but very similar. Oh dear. After level two, the game doesn't tell you if you what level you're on. We've got some asteroids. It's inconceivable the programmers of this game hadn't either played Gradius in the arcade or Nemesis on the MSX. And level one on the C64. And one thing that happens if you survive the baddies for so long, they just clear off. So... I ha you'll notice... The frame speed difference between the C64 and the other versions, and it's not as noticeable when you play it. It's flipping between them here, you notice that the C64 version is noticeably smoother, but really it's not a huge issue. Back to the ST. Same section and start level two. I just don't like how the power-ups work on this. It's too difficult to track what they are. You've got to look at the status display. Over to the specy. It's lovely and colourful on the specy. It, it really is a very, very polished shoot 'em up 987, so they've not done 1 to 8k sound. It's a little bit of a shame you could have that Amstrad sound across there, across here. It could be easily ported across by someone, probably already has done by a Russian or Finnish group or, or someone. No obvious signs of colour clash. It's all really well designed and, and really colourful. Playability wise, it's so good and. We come across the Amstrad. Yeah, the Amstrad version's got more colours, but the frame rate's the same. And to be honest, I think the Specky version just slightly edges it because it's higher resolution. But coming back to the power up system, I really don't like it. In Nemesis slash Gradius, it's really easy to track what power ups you have. It's a very clear display at the bottom of the screen. This is a mess. You've got to know what the icons mean and. Then you can detect the power-up levels as well, and you've got to cycle through, and oh, it's just... It's not intuitive. And the activation, having to hold down the fire button to activate the fuel scoop while still firing at things, and then having to find another power-up, it's nuts! It's just, they've overthought it. If you're going to rip off Radius slash Nemesis, um, just do it. Don't overcomplicate the unique part of that game that works really well. I'm on the ST. 
really a forgotten 16-bit shoot 'em up because, of course, you've got games like Xenon 2, which came along and, in terms of presentation, blew this out of the water. On the 8 bits, it's more fondly remembered. Problem is, if you've got no affinity for shoot 'em ups, you're going to find this gameplay very samey. You're going to find the game just loops around and around and around, and also the, some of the gaps and gaps between you and the baddies are so tight, you're going to die a lot. Collision detection is now off on the C64. So while I'm trying to play it correctly, um, clearly if you see me go over something, it's because I wanted to show further into the game. Yes, I am a rubbish games player. The game has a two-player option. Hurrah! It's not the kind of two-player option like Radius. No, it's one after the other, and thus is completely pointless. Still, it looks good on the box, because it says two players, it just doesn't say two-player co-op. And the display on the C64 is another one that's really hard to read. Too much going on down there. Amstrad version is more basic. Still, it's horrible. It's a shame because what's going on above the display here on the CPC is rather nice. They've hit me up. I'm on indestructible on the Amstrad as well because, again, this is about oh, level five, six, seven. Either way, I can't get this far. Big baddies, and I, you know I said there wasn't any slowdown on the CPC. I think there's a little bit when some of the big baddies come on the screen, but not like some games. It's not horrifically noticeable. And as far as I can see, I don't know if there's a game ending where it just loops around and around. You'd have to be a pretty good game player to be able to loop the levels. It's insanely hard on any of these versions. We're back on the ST. It's activated some power-ups there. And enhanced fire rate and multiple extra weapons are, are really useful. The best weapons to have are the guided ones, usually, which come up with crosshair. One speed up and a couple of power ups on your fire rate as well. The speed up and power rate power ups also decay over time. So you need to collect more fuel, but you need to make sure you're on the right section to collect fuel for that. It's all a mess, it's all over complicated, and it takes a lot of enjoyment out of the game because you're looking at the enemies, you're not looking at an over complicated gauge down the bottom trying to micromanage your weapon systems and all the fuel and the other bits. As I say, in, in Gradius, you can just afford to glance away at that very simple control panel to work out what's going on. Your speed power-up's never going to run out. Your weapon fire rates aren't going to run out unless you die or you're saying speed. It's just too complicated. They've overthought this. And by the way, again, on the ST, I'm cheating now, as you probably guessed. Zynapse for 987 is a quite remarkable shooter for the 8-bit systems. Okay, with hindsight, we know that Gradius Nemesis is a far better game than this, and I'd load that up on my MSX, even on the MSX1, any day of the week, despite the fact this is clearly a more polished game in terms of graphics, sound, and so on, than that game, on the MSX1 at least. But what, it, what shooter ups come down to is playability and how much fun they are. And the other thing I haven't mentioned is the restart points, which are really annoying. It's either back to the start of the level or the middle. The Spectrum Commodore and Amstrad versions are all polished for their respective systems. C64 owners will crow about the 50 frames a second animation rate. Indeed, I quite like that higher resolution the Spectrum has and that splash of colour. But if you're going to force me to say that, yes, the C64 version is, I suppose, the most polished, but frankly, I'd play any three of them. The ST and Amiga, I'm afraid this game got superseded by other shoot-em-ups pretty quickly. If you got this in 1988, 
you would have thought it was quite polished and an upgrade from the 8 bits, but really, Xenon 2, Blood Money, so many other games we've covered on Chini Vision as well that just do the job better. Overall, on the 8 bits at least, Zynaps is a classic game, but one that's unfortunately just too complicated with its weapon power up systems. But if shoot 'em ups are your bag, difficult ones at that, then this is an 8 bit classic.